What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto what if if you end up liking the video please consider subscribing it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my main channel so if you're interested in what if Naruto had Madara and the QB sealed inside of him or what if Naruto was Ice Guide to Game of Thrones go check out my main channel. And if you're interested in what if Naruto was a assassin in West Eros or what if Naruto was trained by a Sith Lord go check out my third channel and with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. I did not think you would return so soon Tsunade stated as Naruto entered the office alone the blonde was carrying the sword of the thunder god on his back he had been putting it aside over the past days since he was always in the office or in meetings it brought a smile to her seeing him carry the sword Tobarama used to carry the room occupants were Godaimo Kage Shizen and Sakura. I finished the mission early have you forgotten that I no longer have to worry about traveling Naruto responded. As he produced a scroll to Tsunade he nodded at the other two who in turn smiled back at him it would be rather rude if you were to continue speaking with Tsunade without greeting them rudeness only pushed people away from you still I would have thought it would take a few days she paused for a moment the mission would be have been troublesome but it was not since the enemy had already completed what they were doing who was the enemy 2s rank criminals from Akatsuki Daidara and Sasori they escaped from the country of wave after i battled with sasori for a moment i did not pursue them since i knew that they would not return because their objective was met since i did not get the enemy i did not take the pay since i did not kill them naruto responded casually a detailed report is in that scroll and writing wait a minute you attempted to fight s rank criminals on your own do you have a death wish the voice of the godame had been raised high as she spoke she did not sound too pleased by the report it would have been okay if it was Jiraiya the man was a Sanin but Naruto was Naruto she could not have him fighting s rank criminals not yet anyway relax Naruto said trying to cool the Hokage down I knew I could never defeat them I was just not going to run away because I knew that they would escape once they knew they had been found I am strong but I am not arrogant enough to attempt to fight 2s rank shinobi without some plan what was your plan that did not seem to calm the blonde Hokage down pretend like I was waiting for reinforcements so that they would leave the country I knew if I did not battle seriously they would assume that I was stalling and since I have been spotted traveling with Jiraiya they would think I was stalling for him to arrive forcing them to flee a smooth lie he hated doing it but he could not tell Tsunade that he had been waiting for Itachi and Kisame to arrive that was some great plan Tsunade drawled her tone dripping with barely hidden sarcasm what if they had found out you were lying and captured you they would have to catch me first i do not believe that either of them was fast enough to do that naruto responded coolly don't think that you cannot be caught because you are fast don't get too arrogant in your speed tsunade sama shizen intervene in a stern tone does it even appear that naruto is arrogant if anything naruto has shown that he is anything but arrogant his plan was risky but a good one just calm down and think with your mind and her heart for once Tsunade glare at Shizen but the medic Neen held her own stare without flinching despite her fierce loyalty Shizen was not afraid to voice her thoughts Naruto stood up while the two were stared at each other Shizen when you are free come and see me before I leave the village later on with that the blonde disappeared from the office Shizen side you know Tsunade sama if you keep reacting like that when Naruto says he faced strong opponents he won't be honest with you next time Sakura who had been quite nodded in agreement I would understand that you care for him but Naruto is not like when he was still a genin back then he would have fought them with the aim to defeat them even when they were much stronger than him but now he is different as he said he knew he could not defeat them that sounds like someone who knows his own limits and even if they had discovered his plan if it got dangerous he could have just flashed away using the Horation. Not you too Sakura Tsunade said before sighing perhaps I may have overreacted a little a little Shizen question with a raised brow let me guess overreacting would be pinning him to the wall he tone was a rare sarcastic one it even surprised the Godame that the woman could use sarcasm a little while later Naruto was preparing everything he needed for his visit to Kirigakure he ought to have left in the morning but leaving later would do he could get into the village any time he wanted to eat had not told the Mizukage the exact date of which he was gone come to her village but he had informed her that he would visit soon if he does arrive later and he would sleep for the night before discussing with her the terms of the treaty the following day if he announces his visit well he could get her to prepare what she needed to prepare for their talks it would not be healthy if he were to arrive before she had fully prepared herself for the talks his preparations included going through the village's history he needed to understand everything about the village before looking into getting a treaty with it he had already gone through everything he just needed to ensure that he had not forgotten anything it was never a bad thing to do so just in case it would be embarrassing if you were to forget some details while they are busy talking a blunder like that would cause the treaties to halt nevertheless his clones had done much work on getting everything to his head he did not only 
study the history he also studied the latest of what was happening going with outdated information would also be an embarrassment to him he was just glad for Jiraiya's spy network but Kisame had been the real supplier of much intel on Kirigakure treaty with Kirigakure will surely benefit Kanoha well and also carry both villages stood to gain much from each other Sunade should have realized this and try to put on a word to get something done but the woman was busy with internal affairs that she did not consider other villages of course when a village was a threat she would be alarmed but when a village posed no threat the woman had done nothing to unite with it he was trying to get the villages united so they could have a nation that is at peace it would not be an easy task though but he will ensure that it happened he had already done the groundwork someone walked into his office without even knocking the blonde quickly looked to see who it was Anko there was not a change in Naruto's expression when he saw her he just went back looking through his documents without giving the woman another glance Anko was first to speak so this is where you have been hiding she walked behind his desk and sat on top of it on his right hand hiding is not the correct term but nothing will change your viewpoint on the matter nevertheless I have been merely occupied within the office doing important work Naruto responded calmly he did not look at her as he spoke nor he did he seem concerned about anything or about the fact that she was sitting on his desk the blonde knew that speaking about it would not get the woman to sit on a chair leaving it as it was saved him some breath important work I don't see that being important work you know you should let this office work be done by old geezers you are too young to be occupied by paperwork you need to get out of here and spill some blood or you will lose it the woman folded her hands on top of her breasts as she spoke Seriously she could never understand why someone so young would accept something like this office work was for old geezers who had nothing better to do in life a young man ought to be doing what other young men do having fun that is your view of the matter however my view is different from yours and I don't feel like even explaining myself Naruto responded coolly with a shrug he never looked at Anko as he spoke it seemed to irk her greatly that he was not looking at her but his paperwork I never asked you to explain I was merely stating a fact Anko drawled as she moved in front of him her whole body was on the desk and she was sitting on top of Naruto's paperwork this made it impossible for Naruto to ignore her presence in her mind he was ignoring her because he was not looking at her Naruto side so much for getting some work done he should set a seal on the office the seal would only allow one to enter if he said so this would certainly be good as he would avoid annoyances such as this what do you want Anko not deterred by his question Anko responded curtly I am bored so Naruto asked with a raised brow this was a first he did not think the woman would come to bother him just for that while he would admit that they got well when Anko was not being mischievous he had certainly not expected her to come to him just to tell him she was bored I thought we could do something her tone seemed suggestive and the grin on her face did not betray that if Naruto had been anyone he would have been blushing at the second thought that came to his mind but he did none of that but before he could reply another voice spoke do what Tsunade questioned hands on her chest with narrowed look between Naruto and Ango Shizen and Sakura were also standing beside her the latter seemed to be in deep thought judging by her expression nothing that lover boy has not done before Ango responded before Naruto could for a moment it looked like she was not going to leave Naruto's desk but after a few moments she stood up and whispered something into Naruto ear no one could tell what she had said because Naruto did not give an emotional display on his face after that the woman disappeared. In a swirl of leaves what was that about Naruto Sakura asked beating Tsunade to the punch she was curious at the scene that had just played before her hence her question I was only expecting Shizen what are you two doing here Naruto question ignoring Sakura's question answer the question brat Tsunade suddenly exclaimed as she took a seat along with Shizen as Sakura closed the door I don't have to Naruto responded in a firm tone he had not time for this kind of conversation with Tsunade what? Are they doing here Shizen Tsunade Sama insisted since the project also affects them Naruto looked straight at Tsunade I would understand why Sakura would be here but despite being a medical ninja yourself planning does not necessarily include you we had discussed that already the blonde stated he really did not want to deal with her at this time while he is actually not going to answer the question Sakura mumbled to herself but she soon realizes that it had been enough for everyone to hear her she quickly covered her mouth it was no matter but she had not thought that they would all hear her letting aside of the fact that you did not answer my question I am here because I want to be I am the go dame Hokage after all and besides I have to see you make the plan so I can correct you when you are going the wrong way the blonde Hokage responded with a straight face I did not forget that you are the Hokage and the actual planning has already been done Naruto paused for a moment I do believe 
that your main reason to be here is to avoid your work he then took one file from the files on his desk, he took out a few papers and handed them to Shizen this is the rough work of everything we have discussed about the curriculum and the academy was going to be changed next year it would not be an ideal choice to enforce the changes in the middle of the year, a better choice was enforcing them in a new year one of the changes to be implemented was that the academy lessons would include a subject in medical ninjutsu it will only be theory the class would be offered to aspiring 30 students for the next year only this was only because of the small budget that would be made available and the available teachers could only handle that number but things would get better if there was good progress and the students showed the mental capabilities to practice medical ninjutsu this program is designed because there is a lack of top level medical means their shortage was everywhere naruto wanted all academy graduates to have the basics on medical ninjutsu but the current budget did not allow that there was a shortage of funds this was not only the project that would start in the next year there were a few of them that meant that a great deal of money would be used unless Kanoha could attract more money then the projects would be started slowly Iwagakure why do you have to be so stubborn old man Kuratsuji yelled at her grandfather seriously he could be really stubborn when he wanted to be it was damn right annoying to her since she had to deal with him every day the old man was really difficult to handle sometimes his stubbornness would get him killed one day don't raise your voice too loud I can hear you perfectly well when speaking in your normal tone the sand named such a kid replied calmly not even seeming concerned by his granddaughter's yelling she always acted like this so it was nothing new to him getting worked about it would only give him an unwanted Headache he certainly did not need any time soon are you sure old farts sometimes lose their hearing because of their advanced age she grinned as she watched his brows twitch sometimes it was fun being her she could get to see her grandfather twitch like that anyone else would be threatened dearly but her he could not do anything to her she was his beloved granddaughter after all I am not that old Anoki replied giving his granddaughter a slight glare but he shook his head after a second so not to get drawn into another meaningless argument with her really I bet you can't even run a lap around the village without suffering from back pains her grin widened because she knew that Anoki suffered from back pains they were a bother to him sometimes she really did pity him sometimes she did not but even so with those pains he was still that such a gage and was still really strong he was no weakling do you have to remind me Anoki asked silently wincing at the thought of his back problems just thinking about it did not dwell well with him his back really did give him trouble and it had a neck to acting up in crucial moments you asked for it Kuratsuji responded with a shrug of her shoulders but seriously grandfather are you really not going to do anything about the bastard Namikaze no not now at least Anoki replied firmly he has not done anything against us and what his father did was nothing personal it was war everyone knew there would be casualties I pity those who lost there lives but our shinobi also killed Kanoa shinobi but that is different from how he did it it was not a fight he butchered a wagakure shinobi Kuratsuji argued in a calm yet firm tone it was quite different from the tone she had been using earlier which was loud and annoying true but what do you think will happen if naruto is killed by our shinobi do you think Kanoa will just sit around and do nothing do you think other villages which the boy has made himself a hero within will stand still and do Nothing of course they won't but we can handle it we have recovered well from out loses in the past years not to mention we have two Jinchurikis I don't think that any small village will even attempt to start a war with us we would crush them Kuratsuji responded with an arrogant smirk causing her grandfather to shake his head the girl had potential but she was still too young and naive she did not understand certain things well at least he was here to teach her those things don't be too arrogant Kuratsuji this time Anoki's voice was a little loud but still holding much power and authority we may have recovered well from the past war but Kanoha is still called the strongest hidden village it has allies in Sunagakir the village also has the strongest bijou in existence not to mention that there are still two Sanans I know that but we Anoki cut her off quite I will hear no more of this his voice was demanding even if we do win have you ever paused to think that it would be at a cost more families will lose their loved ones in this thirst for revenge and I will not risk the lives of my men in pursuit of pitiful revenge do you understand me Kuratsuji said nothing she merely folded her hands across her chest and huffed and puffed Anoki shook his head again seriously he was getting too old for this why couldn't the brat just understand you need to focus on the operation to expand our territory since you will be the one leading our forces before Kuratsuji could respond Another voice spoke out of nowhere perhaps I could be helped such a gage if you fear the power of Kanoha Anoki snapped his fingers as his ANBU appeared it surrounded the man who had appeared inside his office out of nowhere he was certainly not getting a good vibe from this man still he scoffed at the mention that he feared Kanoha's power he did not fear the power of the village he was merely concerned about the safety of his village who are you and what do you want he demanded looking straight at 
The stranger a curious thought came to him how did he even get here please call me Jubi I am only here to offer my help Jubi Anoki thought I don't recall asking anyone for help no you did not but I overheard your conversation with your granddaughter I offer a solution in dealing with Kanoha and in any plans you might have Anoki scoffed I don't need your help ANBU take him to the torture core the old man ordered before the ANBU could do anything the stranger spoke you don't see Naruto as a threat but in the path you trying to venture and you will soon find out that he is much more of a problem than his father was until then the man disappeared in a flash of darkness it went like he had not been there go out and look for him Anoki yelled someone could not just come and go within his office the ANBU did not need to be told twice they quickly disappeared to search for the stranger it would be difficult since his sen had also disappeared it had been like he was never there to begin with what the hell was that old man Kuratsuji question looking straight at her grandfather who looked absent-minded but she had ignored that fact to get her question answered sadly for her her question was ignored later that day it was well that he had thought of marking this place when he had come here with Jiraiya if he had not he would have been forced to take a ship and that would be time consuming especially now when he was used to teleporting to wherever he wants to the fact that he had to mark a place to be able to teleport bothered him though a smaller example of the iteration was the Shunshin no Jutsu it was teleportation but Shunshin had its limits. The Flying Thunder God worked around those limits and was much faster than Shunshin it would take some much research to incorporate both Jutsus but he knew that such a Jutsu would have drawbacks the current possibility was loss of speed he has never really been forced to use the level 2 of the Flying Thunder God his father also did not use it when fighting against the Rakage and his brother so he was not worried much about that sign Naruto began to walk forward the sun had already taken its rest Naruto had thought he would arrive before that took place but he was here in this time so there was nothing to be done about it he just had to match on to Kirigakure it would be the first time. He stepped inside the village gates he had always heard of this nation but never came here despite being a small nation Kiridakure was not a weak village before the blood purges the village had some of the strongest clans in the elemental nations who could forget clans such as the Kagaya and the Yuki the blood purges surely have destroyed much of the village's military power this may have brought the village down in the shinobi world military spoke more than anything a weak village was seen. Bella the stronger ones at least Kanoha did not try to enforce her superiority over other villages the village tried by all means to do talking rather than threatening to lay siege to any village that refused her perhaps if Danzo had been in charge of the village he would have forced her into endless wars with other villages so she could reign supreme over the villages the man had a messed up view of things but Naruto was glad that the man was not in charge of Kanoha halt a guard yelled as the Blonde approached the gates Naruto had been walking at a relatively slow pace and was busy in his thoughts he did not even notice when he had finally reached the village but surely if an enemy had shown up he would have been on alert state your name another guard yelled walking towards him it was the customary act for guards when they see a stranger this was done for the security of the village everyone wanted to be safe but still one could lie without them finding out Namakase Naruto the blonde responded coolly not even the bothered by the imposing figure before him the man that had asked the question was a very big man it was one of those who would crush you with just a single punch the amusing thing with shinobi was that even when a man looked like he was a powerhouse by build he who did not look that much could still overpower him mizukage sama was expecting your visit in the next few days the guard stated as naruto handed him his papers he looked at the blonde carefully trying to See if it had been a replacement Jutsu Mei had informed her guards that Anamakase Naruto would be visiting the village soon but she had said in a few days I used a different method of transportation that fast tracked my journey if you could call it Naruto responded calmly he was not going to make a fuss over anything but he would answer the questions to ensure that he left the gate in good relations with the guards it would be troubling if he started with conflicts the only transport to here is s ship you can't run over the sea to hear one of the guards said with a hint of suspicion in his tone but naruto shrugged it off my method of transportation should not really matter now should it there should be no problem if i am not a fake the blonde was as calm as he could be when he responded this was a question we would rather not answer it would be utterly foolish for him to walk around telling people that he could use the flying thunder god technique it is not but we just want to get all the details to avoid allowing an intruder to enter the village under false pretenses the guard explained lightly that is understandable Naruto responded keeping his tone light as the guard before anything could be said further an ANBU appeared before the blonde he spoke in a tone of authority as all ANBU do I will take care of this he said looking straight at the guard hi the guard responded before returning to his post it was almost amusing how some shinobi flinch under the gazes of the 
Stoic ANBUs sure they were the elite in a village, but some shinobi seemed to fear them an order from an ANBU was followed without much fuss perhaps it was because they did not like it when one undermines their authority they were quite strict and never thinking twice about using force when the situation called for it I will take you to the office of the Mizukage it did not sound like he was giving Naruto. A choice in the matter his tone just sounded like Naruto just had to obey silently and... Everything would be well I had thought it would be well if I saw a bit of the village before I see the Mizukage he kept his expression clean not willing to show anything to the ANBU he had stood face to face with the almighty QB battled with Itachi and Orochimaru even when the latter had been toying with him was he going to be frightened of an ANBU hell no you will have time to see the village but I have orders to follow Naruto. Did not respond the ANBU placed his right hand on the blondes shoulder and they disappeared from existence leaving no trace of that they had been standing at the gate Naruto had not made any attempt to fight the ANBU though he allowed himself to be taken away with ease it was the best choice for both him and the ANBU Mizukage office the ANBU did not say anything as they appeared inside the office he simply gave Mei a stiff nod before disappearing back to his post the office was quiet it also seemed peaceful it was for the first time that Naruto had ever Felt such peace within the office of Akagegara's office had been peaceful but not as calming as this one Naruto looked at the beautiful woman sitting behind the desk she was also looking at him with an expressionless face but for some reason she got a smirk on her face perhaps it was because he was staring at her slightly he would not call it staring at her though the blonde was first to speak his thoughts. I see the extent of your beauty has not been fabricated though the elaboration was not quite accurate I had been told that you were a very beautiful woman but it appears to me that the report was not a lie no wonder Jiraiya always gets a dreamy look when your name is mentioned he spoke as he walked towards the desk he stopped before taking a seat the woman waited until he could sit before she could respond my aren't you a brave one the Godain Mizukage responded leaning back at her chair her smile never left as she looked straight at the blonde brave Naruto gave a small smile Perhaps nevertheless I was merely stating a fact May smile broadened for a moment you don't look too bad yourself you are quite a fine young man still it is not every day that you get a young man who speaks his mind without fear the young men of today tend to be very shy around woman lack of self-confidence fear and some thoughts can run wild making it difficult to think straight Naruto responded as he brought out his hand. To May the woman gladly accepted it with a smile Namikaze Naruto I am. The one who wrote to you I have never met you in person before but today I have Terumi Mei Godain Mizukage this is also the first time I meet with you and I must say it is quite a pleasure to see you the Godain stated ever so smiling softly at the blonde she was staring into his blue eyes for the longest time as if she was trying to find something but even if she was looking for something she would not have found anything Naruto's eyes showed the same thing on his face I was not expecting you. To be here so soon I had thought it would take a few days for you to get here May added looking at the blonde calmly as I told the guards I used a faster method of coming here teleportation if you are curious Naruto stated teleportation was a faster method of traveling to longer distance the distance it could take a week or days to reach was reached within minutes with the teleportation technique the flying thunder god technique I presume. If she was expecting Naruto to respond she would be disappointed the blonde did no such thing you will have to wait till tomorrow so we can get to the matter you came here I had not expected anything less than that darkness has already started to fill the village night is just around the corner you also seem tired as though you had been working hard all day Naruto responded calmly he had not expected her to say that they should quickly begin their talks there was still tomorrow so there was no need to rush things you have no idea May said. Referring to Naruto's last words the work today had been rather heavy but she still had some work to do she would be done in an hour or two though after that she could go home and rest one of my ANBU will show you a hotel the village will pay I have to finish my work Naruto nodded as he stood up I will talk to you tomorrow then the blonde stated as an ANBU appeared beside him. If there is anything you need don't hesitate to call me I will send a message for you tomorrow when I am ready if I finish here early I might be the one to fetch you for our talks May added but Naruto did not respond he simply followed the ANBU out of the office silently he would get a chance to get a glimpse of the village while he goes to the hotel tomorrow would represent a good chance for seeing much of the village Naruto sighed tiredly as he threw himself in his hotel bed the ANBU that had accompanied him here would be standing watch on him to ensure that nothing happened to him he did not think that Anyone would actually think of attacking him but it did not hurt making precautions if Mei was offering to guard him why would he refuse that offer he also knew that the main goal of the guard was not to simply protect him but it was also to keep an eye on him to ensure that he did not wander somewhere else he was not supposed to trust was really hard to come by in the shinobi world he had not problem with anything it was to be expected. In this cruel world he was living and no one trusted the 
other especially shinobi that is why he sought to change this world using narration to travel longer distances was putting some strain on his body than he had first thought he had used his clone some time back then to teleport some large things and a number of people but it did nothing to him perhaps it was because the jutsu he had used was designed specially for teleporting large things it did take a lot of chakra to activate the seal though but using this narration to travel longer distances was putting some strain on his body he had figured that the jutsu had not been made for teleporting to long distances but it was made with a battlefield in mind the jutsu was created for instant speed not for teleporting to far away locations hence the strain but he would work on a way around it the strain was nothing too troublesome though it just took a little out of him then when teleporting instantly in shorter distances it was still early to sleep. He could not possibly sleep now he took out a special storage scroll that he created and opened it he then summoned his things putting the other things aside Naruto picked up blank papers and started to do the finishing touches on his book he would be finishing it within a few days especially since he could spend all night working on it but since he was here on business he could. Not afford to spend all night standing he would have to get some much needed sleep the following morning while many found morning to be a time to become irate Naruto actually liked the morning the weather was quite chilled and calm it was a lot peaceful than day by sunrise he had already wakened up and was putting a few things together last night he had ended up writing more words than he would have thought it turned out that he could compile everything nicely and submit his material to a publisher he had yet to find a good one though but Jiraiya would surely help him that a knock on the door and he was already opening it the Mizukage had come to fetch him herself that was a bit of a surprise but then again she had said she might fetch him herself if things worked out well for her still he had thought they would talk in the afternoon or a bit later on he had yet to eat anything I was not expecting to be called this early despite being already awake he was not expecting it good. Morning to you too Mei said with a small smile the blonde had not greeted she thought she may do it for him I wanted to get it done quickly so I can plan ahead and I figured you had yet to eat anything breakfast with your guest if you had not said. That one would have been led to believe that you just want to finish up early so to get rid of me Naruto paused for a moment your guess is correct I have not eaten anything well then shall we Mei smiled follow me Naruto followed her as she led him to a restaurant they did not eat at the hotel even though they offered meals for their customers made seem to know a good place to get some breakfast he just followed her without question he was certain that Kiri served some meals that were quite different from what he normally ate still he believed that there was nothing better than a home cooked meal the meal cooked at home was satisfactory especially when you share it with your loved ones a pity he had to eat his food alone you have quite the Respect from your village Naruto commented looking at the respectful bows and greetings from civilians and shinobi alike they were being directed to the Mizukage as they walked about the streets towards a restaurant the respect this people gave her was much more than Kanoha gave to Sunade it was something similar to what Kanoha showed to the late Sandane the villagers really did love the old man it took some hard work to get them like that May replied smiling somewhat glad that the blonde had. Notice this reality I would imagine so Naruto responded calmly he had the two males behind him they were all looking at him without even blinking well that was to be expected from the personal guards of the Mizukage respect like this is not given to one who has not earned it I used to see something like this when the Sande Mokage was still alive despite his faults he had done best to earn the respect and love Kanoha gave him the professor may frown slightly only for a second though but Naruto's sharp eyes noticed that I have heard so much about him she paused for a moment well what about you I have done much for Kanoha more than anyone in my generation more than most people but Uzumaki Naruto is just Naruto Namikaze Naruto is the son of the Yan name hence he deserves some credit as Namikaze I have not done much but as Uzumaki a pity the village did not acknowledge his sacrifice he was a hero of Kanoha yet he was none of that to the villagers eyes those people did not even see. Him is Naruto the Kyubis Jinchuriki but as Namikaze Naruto the son of their precious Yane Mokage it was just really and he felt somewhat bitter about it while living under your father's shadow she did note that there was some hidden meaning between his words she did not pry though Uzumaki you don't know Naruto asked with a raised brow before I picked up my father's name I was using my mother's name I would have thought that you might be aware of this little detail it was no hidden secret may. Ignored his words it almost felt like a jab on her knowledge of him lack of rather he made it sound like she was not up to date with everything going around the world like she was not informed luckily for her AO responded in her defense Mizukage Sama has just been busy in seeing that the village recovers from the civil war to be worried about other things that are of little concern but I know much about you he did not state what he knew he could leave that for Naruto's imagination of little. 
Concerned Naruto sounded amused you sound like I had just accused the Mizukage of being uninformed, but I would understand since Kiri is far away from other nations ironic, isn't it the thing you find to be of little concern is the one that is trying to form a relationship between Kirigakure and Kanoa. He was talking to Ao despite not looking at the man as he spoke I would end may cut off Ao. Before he could finish his sentence shut up Ao the man nodded stiffly the way Ao responded to May's voice. Seemed to amuse Naruto but no one asked why he found it amusing Mizukage office the breakfast had gone better than Naruto had expected despite things seeming to be going awry Mei did not seem to mind he could tell that she knew that he was not insinuating anything despite his expressionless face he was not the one to be making fun of other people he understood that not everyone could know everything especially. In Kiri they had bigger problems to worry about however he would not agree with Ao's view of things he knew about him and yet he did not tell the Mizukage anything it was not that he wanted to be known but merely shrugging off people as of little concern without knowing them was not a smart thing to do but then again he had an idea that Ao had just said it because he had thought he had accused May of being uniformed the village was truly peaceful you could never guess that only a few years ago. It was hell the civil war had claimed many lives within the village there was also the Kagaya's rebellion the clan had gotten too arrogant and thought they could take over the village but they were dead wrong and ended up dead if history was correct everyone within the clan was killed the civil war had done nothing good for the village but it has now turned well all thanks to their mizukage she fought bravely for the village and rescued it from the blood purge the ground had drunk too much blood but now it was resting the country was at rest from having to digest dead shinobi and civilians carry was not so much different from other villages but perhaps its peace came well other than Kanoa's Naruto shook his head at comparing Kiri with Kanoa Kanoa had many dark secrets the village had been built well from its founding Hashirama and Madara started it well but after that things just went in a bad way perhaps if the Sandame had not been so naive and soft things would not have turned out so badly Danzo had manipulated so many things behind the scenes he held Kanoa's darkness with great effect the man had no shame in doing all that he did he was proud of his dark job the man's ideals were a bit twisted such men like Danzo were the ones that filled the world with darkness and gave birth to vile creatures the result of Danzo's actions had resulted in the birth of pain the actions of the village in the third shinobi world war had not made the village look any less good according to Conan Nagato held deep hatred toward the village had he not died fighting the man who called himself Madara he would have some day go to haunt the village for its actions May looked at Naruto with a warm smile as the blonde sat down on a chair across her desk the blonde was quite calm for a young man it was rare to find such a calm young man the youth of today did not have the right manners but the blonde had them all he had a fault though his impassive expression made him appear not so much friendly but that was far from the truth he was friendly despite his expression Saying otherwise she saw him smile wonderfully when they were talking he truly had a beautiful smile another fault he had was that his blunt way of things made him appear to be rude however he did seem like a good person she was a good judge of character. Her thought could not be wrong I have to say I am surprised that Kanoha would be willing to try to sign a treaty with Kirigakure after the Sandame refused to give me help during the civil war I would have thought you would be ashamed to even. Make such a proposal may stated in a neutral tone not showing whether she was bitter about it or not the sins of those before us Naruto muttered mildly the sand name had his reasons. I cannot explain what he thought about it neither can I say anything about the matter what has happened happened nothing can be changed but I am looking forward to a better future regardless of our history Kanoha might have. Refused to help in the time of need but that was under the old leadership the new leadership does things differently how different the past cannot be forgotten if the sand name had offered you help you would have ended the civil war quickly and with less causality but instead you lost many of your men and drowned this village in a bloodbath but the new leadership in Kanoa is trying to shape a better tomorrow. For the coming generation we admit that we do have many faults but we have also paid. Much he did not exactly answer the question that he was asked, but his way of responding offered more reason to May you are trying to shape a better tomorrow how are you trying to do that she seemed genuinely curious to hear his answer Naruto was not surprised by this though he had known that the woman was very much peace loving and would be certainly be interested in a chance for a better future Naruto smiled slightly. I have started this the wrong way he said earning a raised an eyebrow from. The Mizukage you will have to forgive me Mizukage Sama what I am here representing two parties saying that Kanoha is trying to move on and make amends for its past actions would be far from the truth he paused to look at her reaction he got nothing and so he continued on behalf of Kanoha. I am looking forward to signing a treaty with Kiri and get the two villages to be on good terms rather than staying neutral and on behalf of the other party I am looking to have you join me on a good Kazai. 
we'll talk to you about that before discussing Kanoha however before I can do that I have to show you something Naruto stated standing up show me what something you will have to come with me in order to see it alone maze A and B U were already on alert as soon as the last word left his mouse it sounded suspicious to them even to me but the woman was perfectly calm and she sat silently looking straight into his face where do I have to go with you you will see it Naruto responded as he placed his right hand on the desk may noticed this movement but said nothing she waved off her a and b u okay she said quietly naruto held out his right hand the mizukage took it and they disappeared in a flash of yellow the village hidden in whirlpools they appeared on top off a large building in a foreign land to me she looked around the place curiously there was a large building they stood on that was about 15 story high surrounding the large building were nine other buildings this other buildings were about five stories high but surrounding the standings buildings were ruins nothing seems to have been touched it was just ruins it was just like they had not been touched in many years may had not seen such a place before it was obvious that a great battle had befallen over this place to cause such ruins it was also a bit of a surprise that these other ten buildings had been built in the middle of the ruins she could tell that they were only recently built what is this place may question with a curious expression she did not let out of the fact that she was a bit relieved that she had not been taken some place that would require her to fight that is if the blonde had been planning something but it appears that he was not planning anything he just wanted to show her what he said he wanted to show her this was once the home of the great Uzumaki clan the ruins are what is left of it after it was invaded this is the result a peaceful nation got for being masters in the art of fuinjutsu Three months ago I started rebuilding these standing buildings the materials were already available I just hired someone who could make all this building stand why has no one even suspected that there was some activity going in here may question still looking around at the home of the Uzumaki Naruto had said he once used Uzumaki name she could guess that his mother was an Uzumaki woman he may perhaps be a half Uzumaki she doubted there would be anyone Uzumaki left though the invaders of Yuzu made sure to get rid of everyone when people think of Yuzu they think of the ruins some people have even forgotten about the Uzumaki clan no one suspects that something could happen inside here there is also the fact that no ship has come around here if did come it would have been destroyed by the whirlpools the whirlpools around this island make it impossible anyone to enter the village and looking from upwards you can only see the ruins Naruto explained calmly it had taken some great effort for him to get these buildings standing how did you get the labor into the village if no one gets inside here teleportation Naruto replied simply I teleported those who wanted to help me out here without attracting attention there were quite a number of people in this island it was only finished a few days ago and everyone who was working here has gone back home I believe that in the next few weeks some people will know that there was rebuilding being done in here the men you hired will surely talk about it regardless of how much you pay them may said with a nod she knew the mind of men they would sell any valuable information for a price i did not matter to some even if they were betraying family unfortunately that will be so but no one will be able to enter this island why did you keep the ruins though may asked curiously she had reason to believe that the ruins were kept for a reason no one would build such lovely buildings in the middle of ruins without some reason behind that choice I kept them for a reminder to anyone who comes here these ruins will stay like this until I remove the seals stopping them from falling apart May nodded she did not understand his reason fully but she was not going to question much about it it was not her place to do so obviously the ruins held some sentimental value to him why have you brought me here why have you rebuilt this place would it be a surprise if I said built this because I wanted revenge for all those who took part in the destruction of my home I may have been born in Kanoha but this is my ancestral home and I said I wanted to show you this place so I could speak to you about the other organization I represent Naruto responded with the same tone he has been using May was surprised I did not think you were the revenge type she said looking straight at his eyes Naruto smiled I was correct you are a good judge of character my choice to show you this was a good one after all to be honest you are the first person I have brought here since its completion technically that was the truth but Itachi had come here alone I am flattered However you still have not answered my question Naruto smiled before walking towards the edge of the building follow me he said as he jumped downwards May hesitantly followed him they landed in front of the building it was its entrance that they were facing but that was not picked May's interest on top of the large entrance was the Uzumaki swirl and its crimson glory beneath the swirl were words May read out loud United Nations time skip it was unbelievable she had never seen a library that huge she did not think there was anything that huge that only contained book scrolls and table scrolls it was just unbelievable that something like that could exist she had not known that there could be something that existed and she did not know about it she was sure that no one knew about it her fellow Kages would flip if word got out that something like that existed perhaps when 
the village was destroyed they had heard that something like it existed yes Uzumaki were known for being legendary when it came to Fuenjutsu they also had a shrewd way of doing things they were not just a powerful nation they were also cunning their growth and power prompted other nations to believe that the nation needed to be destroyed in fear of its power the largest tower in Yuzu had the largest underground facility she had ever seen the place was about six or seven story deep she did not know how wide the place Naruto had only given her a glimpse of the place but she knew the place was huge she had never seen such a place that big used for storing information yes if it had been a prison she would not have been surprised to see the place even Kiri's own archives were not that huge despite the fact that the village had a very interesting history behind it who could have thought the underneath all those ruins such a thing existed may looked at Naruto for a moment she released a deep Sayu said I was the second person to see that place who was the other person her tone was dead serious as she questioned something like that in the wrong hands could spell trouble it could be certainly used to disastrous things someone I trust Naruto responded with a small smile he had taken the Mizukage back to her tower after showing the United Nations buildings an archive that also included the ridiculously vault of a library the woman only caught glimpse of it he did not show her Anything within scrolls and books he left that for her imagination to work you know if anyone from IWA or Kumo hears about this they will no doubt invade Yuzushiogakure again and this time the island might be sunken down into the bottom of the sea may said in thought but her serious tone was still kept I know of that but I am not one without allies and even if anyone invades Yuzu again they can't enter the library without my permission that place is seal proved by the best of seals that even I can't completely understand the underground facility has many years and it has been like that since even with the invasion it remains standing Naruto paused for a moment before that one has to get into the island which is not an easy thing the whirlpools that surround the island may said again looking and thought the village was still invaded with those things active I do know that they do make it difficult to enter the island those whirlpools wreck ships this makes it difficult to ship an army inside the island all measures and security threats have been looked into it is not something that i am bothering myself with naruto said looking to move on to another subject he had already calculated everything and as long as his library stayed a secret for now he would not be worried about anything he had to worry about getting things on board and running may not at united nations you did not explain anything i want to live in a peaceful world I want to have a family that will not grow up to this cruel world we live in this world is not what I want I reject its ideals and principles I want to live in a world of peace where villages are not fighting to kill each other a united world where we all fight together to defeat evil the United Nations is a step towards that mark it may sound naive but I know I can at least make the world better he did not color anything he placed it on the table as it was it was of little use to try to beautify things and make it all dramatic of course he could have even gone further and given examples of just how cruel the world was but may already knew that the godain mazukage looked at the blonde for a minute unblinking trying to see if he was joking or not his tone did not say he was joking but with a shinobi you could never be too sure after she had confirmed that he was not joking may spoke that is some dream you have she said she did not sound interested in it not by any chance Naruto knew what she was trying to do I have allies in the wave country Amagakure Takigakure and Kusagakure Sunagakure will soon be an ally I am acquainted with the Kasakage well enough to know that if it was him I was speaking to him he would be inquiring about the way forward you cannot forget that I am also a shinobi of Kanoha more to that an ambassador and proposed future Okage of the village I also have all the resources I need in Yuzu so not even Kanoha knows about this may said looking straight at the blonde you even say that you are friends with the kazakage yet you have yet to say a word to him why come to me before speaking to those naruto merely smiled gara is a friend i can always trust even without speaking to him about this i know he will work with me because he knows me kanoha will need a bit more of persuading to get on board but the godame okage sees a grandson in me i am also the godson of jiraiya because those two know me they will be my friends in this course he paused for a moment I came to you because I chose to do that you are Akage and have experienced the cruelty of the world unlike both Gara and I you are older and wise you also offer a different perspective of view and could inject something that both of us cannot to the United Nations again May was quite I do wish for peace but your plan seems ambitious she leaned back to her chair and silence for a few moments what do you want from me every organization needs a committee that will lead it there ought to be a managerial structure within the organization to delegate different departments and objectives of the organization i am the president of the un while i hope to have gara become the vice this organization has to have its executive board compromised of different representative of members of the villages within the organization i want you to be the chair of that executive board naruto said shocking the mizukage with what she has seen of yuzu 
She knew he was not joking and was very serious the United Nations was a real thing he had set up everything the offer though was unexpected she had not thought that he would offer her something like that to say that she was surprised was an understatement I will have to think about this she said Naruto took out two scrolls and handed them to the Mizukage don't open them now you can open them after we have finished talking the second scroll contains the objectives of the UN in detail and all. The paperwork you have to sign what do I have to sign I have not yet said I will join you I think you will you have nothing to lose aligning with the UN only strengthens your village read those files and you will find out how much it benefits the people of Kiri should everything work out as planned Naruto paused for a moment should we talk about Kanoha and Kiri now may rubbed her head it would be good if we take a break but let us talk this through she said why should Kiri ally with Kanoha. Naruto merely smiled as he began talking three hours later Mei sighed tiredly as Naruto disappeared from her office she really needed to get some rest and had yet to reach noon but her mind was tired what she had been doing with the blonde had drained her energy she had never thought that her talks with him would be so demanding to her mental energy she had expected to have normal treaty talks but she did not get any of that Naruto did not talk normal he was an ambitious dreamer and had the Confidence that made her want to believe him he was so calm when he spoke he really seemed like someone who knew what he was talking about the blonde spoke much and was pretty good dealings things like this she now could understand why Kanoha allowed him to talk in the stead of the Hokage normally talks like this were done with the Hokage but Kanoha had sent him he was not a disappointment. He really seemed like he had been born for this kind of job the blonde was a fine gentleman too he was a bit. Rude though but she had discovered that he was a good person too bad he was a little younger perhaps if she gave him a few years he would grow up to become a fine husband yes he definitely would a treaty with Kanoha would be signed soon Naruto just wanted Kanoha to agree to everything as it seems that some of the things he had stipulated in the treaty had not been made known to Kanoha she doubted that the village would accept such things but then again things were different from back then back. Then the village had refused to aid her in the civil war what a bummer that had been she had thought that the village would help her given that they preached peace and that she had never thought they would leave her on the cold like that but the sand name had done it he had refused to help things had come to this point now she was certainly looking forward to this treaty with Kanoha it would do her well carry to be precise an alliance with Kanoha was something that she would not refuse especially. When the village was not making any outrageous demands stronger villages had a tendency to do things like that they always tried to make ridiculous demands when having treaty negotiations with villages weaker than them some villages would cave in fear of being destroyed she was not worried about the lead threatening her village should she have refused the treaty negotiations despite its history the village was not known to those extreme measures to achieve something the treaty she had. Negotiated with Naruto was benefiting both villages her council will surely be thrilled when she does tell them about it she was grateful that Naruto had been the one to talk with she had a feeling that if it had been someone else things might have turned out differently Naruto knew how to handle things well and did not seem to have any hidden agendas of course he had told her that some of the things they agreed on may be cut depending on how the council of Kanoha viewed things but he had said. He would put his foot down to ensure that everything went well she had no doubt he would do that you and Hume thought with a small smile Naruto had seemed very confident that she would agree to join him she did not know where he got the confidence from if anything she had thought of joining it did not do her any harm in joining a cause for peace in a united world after speaking with the blonde about Kanoha and Kiri treaty she was confident that the blonde would persuade other leaders to join him. She liked that he did not carry an aura of arrogance and overconfidence around him he was smart and rational she wished for a world of peace her people looked up to her to bring them peace and make their lives easy without facing much pain and suffering she knew she could not take all that away from everyone but she could try to make things better the UN could change things it was the right direction for her she took out one of the scroll Naruto had given and opened it by the markings she realized it was a storage scroll she channeled chakra onto it and in a puff of smoke a large file appeared it was addressed to her she opened it and took out a stack of papers that were clipped together she looked at it and read it she smiled after she had finished reading it naruto was indeed smart and he seemed to have thought everything through the laws of the un were something else for the lack of a better word but she could see that it benefited her and carried greatly the treaty with kanoa would be like a bonus if she joined the organization at this rate I may end up joining May muttered to herself as she went over to the next scroll she would see through the rest of the documents Naruto had given her later on after she had settled her thoughts and some rest the scroll was like the previous one and she repeated the same process she did in the first one in puffs of smoke swords that she thought she would never see again appeared she looked on of the swords and found a note as 
President of the UN I thought it would be well to hand this over to you they will be of use if you ever thought of restarting the next generation swordsman a bit hypocritical that I spoke of peace yet I supply you with weapons of destruction ha huh, anyway I believe that power ought to be used for fighting against evil against those who have lost their humanity whether we like it or not there will always be someone with evil intentions, but those with good intentions will always step up to fight the good fight use them well to fight the good fight Namikaze Naruto 2 hours later Tamari you are going to the event and that is final Gara stated firmly looking straight at his older sister she older woman was staring at her brother with a hard glare but she should know that nothing like that would work on her brother he was the master of things like that in fact if was not because of her anger she would have been flinching under his stare I don't want to go Gara. I am supposed to be in Kanoha to finalize the new arrangements in our alliance with them Naruto and I have to get some things too complete before Kanoha starts the new projects you know that we have to discuss the things because we will be taking part in some of them Tamari argued with a steel tone she was not going to back down without a fight even if it meant she had to fight her brother Naruto is going to be there and as far as I am concerned he is the one in charge of all the projects without him the Godain will not discuss anything because the projects are planned by Naruto he has all the details didn't you tell me that Tamari gritted her teeth she had not expected him to say that she had no other way to argue with the point her brother had made brother can't you just take Kankuro and Baki with you her tone had come down to a resigned tone as she questioned Gara shook his head Kankuro is not suited for formal events such as this he might screw things up and you know how important this is for us I do not want anyone to mess this up for us the daimyo has invited top officials within the wind country and some in the fire country this will be good for the village I cannot go with Baki because he has to look after things while I am away I do not doubt you abilities but you do not have the same image and authority as Baki is there anyone else going to be there from Kanoha Tamari questioned curiously she understood how important this was to Sunagakir she just did not want to do it because she hated how the top officials in the village acted they were very much controlling and she was not willing to be controlled by anyone I was only informed that Naruto would be going he is not going to be taking part in anything he will just be there as a date to the daimyo but since he is a representative of the village I think he will also represent it Gara responded losing his hard stare his look remained impassive though it was nothing new to Tamari though the Kage always had this look it was almost his happy look Tamari relented fine I will go but I won't be playing made to anyone you know I would never expect you to play that I would rather lose all potential alliances and treaties than to have you become a slave the younger of the sand siblings responded with a cool look on his face I know Tamari replied quietly Gara was her brother and despite how emotionless he often appeared he would never do anything to harm her he always protected her no matter what even when at times he took it to the extreme she liked knowing that he cared for her it was very different from back in those days where he used to threaten both her and Kankuro but today she was sure he would kill anyone who threatened her she would even go as far as to pity anyone who does her any harm knowing that the Kasakage would do horrible to that person but I do request that you keep your anger bottled up because I do not wish to pay for any damages you might be responsible for Gara stated in a serious tone a tone that Tamari knew too well even though he had said it to be a request it was no request he was simply telling her to behave and certainly won't be happy if things turn out in a way he was not expecting before Tamari could respond Naruto appeared in the office I do hope I am not intervening on a family meeting the blonde stated looking between Tamari and Gara Gara shook his head slightly Tamari and I were just finishing up he paused for a moment by your look you seem to be looking for me rather than my sister who you have been dealing with over the past weeks the San Kasakage stated Naruto nodded as he remained standing hello Tamari as always it is lovely to see you again the blonde stated so that the woman could not leave without a greeting it would be somewhat rude for him to waltz into the office without extending his greetings to her especially when he worked with her the woman smiled at him before walking out of the office to allow the boys to have their talks what brings you here you remember that I said I wanted to show you something Naruto said looking straight at the Kasakage Gara nodded in response today is the day the blonde revealed looking impassive as always well show me Gara said looking straight at his fellow Jinchuriki with Naruto he did not have to be suspicious of anything Naruto was Naruto if there was something he could sense it he knew the other Jinchuriki quite well hence he did not have to feel wary with whatever Naruto wanted to show him he was curious to say the least the blonde had made it sound very important when he had told him about it we will have to take a few minutes away from the village Naruto warned walking closer to the Kazakage once he got close to Gara, he placed his right hand on the Kage's shoulder before they disappeared he did notice however that Gara did not even flinch nor tense when they teleported away it pleased him knowing how much Gara trusted him he too of course trusted the Kage he believed that this trust would surely bear much fruit he hoped to never lose it a few minutes later they had 
returned after he had showed Gara Yuzushioka Kirno the new village hidden in whirlpools it was new and it also represented something else new Uzumaki relied much on Kanoha for protection in the old days despite the village being a shinobi village they relied much on Kanoha to protect them there was also the fact that they refrained from fighting despite being a strong nation new Yuzu was something else different the new village was going to change the world well that was certainly surprising. Gara stated looking straight at Naruto yet no surprise was evident on his face since they had returned they settled down for some silence Naruto had refrained from speaking to allow Gara to process everything he had seen he had merely decided to show him instead of talking but you have handled it well the Mizukage showed much surprise it took some time for her to get over her shock after everything I had shown her Naruto stated, not hiding that he had shown Meizu before he had shown Gara. Secrets would not do well if you wanted everything to be a success and besides it was nothing much to hide Gara merely raised a brow at this but did not show much surprise nonetheless you are coming from Kiri he said with how the blonde had been busy he could only guess that he had shown Mei new user recently it was not a difficult thing for Naruto to move about nations without much time since he could teleport to anywhere, he wants how useful the space slash time jutsu was yes I showed the Mizukage. Everything I showed you and gave her an offer an offer he had no doubt she was going to accept it was just a matter of time the next time he would see the woman and she would be telling him that she has accepted what is the UN it is an organization which seeks to find peace and maintain it the core goal of the UN is to make a peaceful world where villagers will have good relations with others a world where people can understand each other a world where people are free to walk about without much. Fear humans are flawed creatures, we cannot blame chakra to be the source of evil without chakra man has swords and knives even if you take away all the weapons man will find a way to create another one but the UN know I want to create a peaceful world, a world that weapons will not be used to harm innocents but to deal with evil I want a world where we will all fight against not against each other but against those who have lost their humanity as long as there is the strong and weak their will always be conflicts but I hope to balance everything Bijus had been given to other villages by the Shodai Hokage as means to balance power but that was a complete failure you cannot give a greedy man more power and hope he will not use it for his greed what the world needs is not more power but a law the UN it is needed to maintain mediate between villages smaller and the greater ones under the UN I hope to ensure that all villages who will be members strive for one goal shinobi under a single village leave peacefully without much conflict because they are home and consider themselves comrades they live happily with each other under the protection of their leader I hope to have the UN which will be led by a council the council will be made by different leaders of each village this will ensure that everyone has a say I have compiled a few laws and principles but the rest will be made in agreement with all members an idea as this will make all leaders feel involved in the process and a true part of the organization this council will ensure that every conflict within villages are solved without the need for battle Naruto paused for a moment to allow Gara to absorb everything he had said he did not want him to lose some details after a few moments he continued when I say law I mean that all those under the UN all members must adhere to certain laws if not there will be severe punishment there are bans and restrictions that can be sanctioned against anyone who breaks the laws such an organization will need funds to run and much information we will need to have the best spy network in the world to ensure that we are informed about everything funds will be contributed by each member the UN will need to have its own military force I already have set up something I have funds to begin everything but more will be added once everything has been stabilized within the UN members work together to improve the living of each member Kages strive to help each other I have already found a few members but I will be able to get more members soon I offered the Mizukage a position of supreme chairwoman to the executive council I am the president I fall just above her but in many cases she has the same power as I do I wanted you to be my vice as well as commander of the UN's army they will be stationed all over the world and will act as a police force but the HQ will be in use of this means that you will work with ANBU of different villages but no one will interfere with the UN's work there are more positions that need to be filled they will be so when I host the first conference in at least two months Gara was silent for a few moments you did not build the UN in Kanoha to avoid other villages saying that it is under Kanoha if it was so it would be thought that Kanoha is trying to control the other nations Naruto nodded indeed Kanoha is already the strongest and to avoid a blunder where the village will have power over the UN I built everything elsewhere and did not center it on Kanoha I have yet to inform them of this but I will do so after I leave here I do not wish for the UN to be under any village that is why I want each Kage to hold a position of power within the organization you have thought this through and prepared everything I am impressed you also understand the nature of men your goal is ambitious but it is very much possible I believe it will work as such you have my support as well as soon as Gara. 
stated in a firm tone Naruto smiled the trust you have in me I hope that it is not wasted no one has tried this but we shall there will be many challenges ahead. I hope to have you as a partner I wish for our friendship to grow stronger than this even after we have made this dream a reality he paused for a moment and gave Gara a small scroll it is a storage scroll. It contains your contract and much information about the UN Gara took the scroll silently do you think that Kanoha will agree to this all I need to do is convince the clan heads and Tsunade it will be a little difficult but I will manage Naruto responded calmly with Kirisuna and Kanoha under the same roof the smaller villages will surely follow Gara stated Naruto nodded I believe so I also plan to unite all Jinchurikis I have so far gotten in touch with other two I talked well with the seven tails Jinchuriki and she is on board he paused for a moment Tsunade talk to me about your problem as a friend I will help you remove the problem the Uzumaki have a large vault of cash I am currently able to make a small withdrawal but I should have all funds available to me soon but in the meantime I am collecting some funds elsewhere thank you was a response from Gara Naruto merely smiled it is what friends are for he stood up I will return to collect your contract and with more details as to how we will proceed Gara nodded and Naruto disappeared he needed to rest first before his talks with Kanoha it was bound to be hard and he would be forced to speak whatever that is necessary. Things are certainly going to be interesting from now on Gara said to himself as he opened the scroll Kanoha the council of Kanaha the Kur had gathered within the council chambers Naruto was not intimidated the atmosphere within the chambers it was not his first time coming here he had held meetings within the chambers before but in most cases he was usually quiet and spoke when questioned he kept himself at a respectable level even when someone spoke trash but today was very much different from the previous meetings he had been part of this one was also called by him given his post and duties he could speak to the Hokage and call a meeting so much has indeed happened over the pa days today was surely a hard day for him speaking and traveling was putting so much strain on his mind it was tiring to be speaking as well as trying to convince people to buy what you were selling he did not need to convince Gara, but he had to dig well with the Mizukage that woman questioned a lot and went to detail over everything when they were discussing about a treaty with the village she had been thorough about everything it was tiring but he had gone through it all without a hitch after returning from Sunagakur he had taken some time to speak with Tsunade he had to speak with her first before making his proposal it would not dwell with both of them if he had gone to the council to make a proposal without speaking to her first she was the leader of the village she had to know first there was also the fact about their personal relationship she would need to know about everything he was doing before the others speaking with her had drained much of his energy especially when the woman proved to be much more demanding than she had been she had demanded he spilled everything and even went as far as to threaten him in the end he took her to Yuzu to show her what he had shown the others. It was not that he had not planned to show her what he had built the matter was that once he started. Speaking Tsunade took charge and the format of their conversation became like an interrogation instead of him explaining everything to her plainly without her stern gaze he was forced to answer her questions at least she had calmed down a bit after some time and he was able to fill all the blanks he had left. Since he wanted her to know everything at least she welcomed the thought well after everything she agreed to call the meeting he wanted to do everything within this day so that he could work on his options there was also the fact that he would have to leave soon to the capital of the wind country the event Miyuki would be hosting was to be held soon his presence was requested since he has never been to the capital before he would have to travel without the use of his oration but he had not complains though the journey would be welcomed why have we been called here Tsunade it better be something agent elder Koharu stated looking straight at the godame her words only earned her a glare from the blonde Hokage the older woman said nothing in response to the glare by the Hokage you are one of my advisors and you will be available when I call you you should not make any complaints and be thankful that I am even allowing you to sit here in this chamber you are just my advisor thus no real power but the clan heads have some power Tsunade retorted with a glare she was not going to have to deal with grumpy old people it annoyed her when they tried to boss her around Koharu said nothing it was best not to say anything but Danzo narrowed his eyes at the godame she is becoming too comfortable to say something like that he thought silently if things continued like this she would soon force them out of the council he would never allow something like that to happen though but the woman would push for it it would be outrageous and unthinkable if she made such a notion possible shall we get on to what we have been called here for then Danzo said ever so impassive and Kami earned nods from the others as you all know Naruto had gone to Kirigakure to hold talks about a treaty yesterday he returned earlier with fruitful results but we will get on to that some other time what you have been brought here is for a proposal that Naruto wishes to outline Tsunade said in a serious tone before she nodded at her fellow blonde but before Naruto could speak someone spoke what is it that you have to propose that we had to be called here the Hokage had nodded to me giving 
me the opportunity to speak if you had allowed me to speak after her you would not have given a question like that he said so coolly that if Danzo had trained him he would have been a proud teacher but anyway I understand that I am bound to Kanoha as a shinobi and fall under the command of the Hokage he paused for a moment but before he could continue someone spoke again you also carry our weapon we can say that you belong to us as long as the QB stays inside of you Koharu stated she just wanted to remind the boy that he belonged to Kanoha and nowhere else she did not want him to become too comfortable with the privileges he had been given to think that he owned himself forgive me Hokage-sama it seems that I may speak out of line today Tsunade merely shrugged but gave him a look that told him to watch what he says Elder Kohari you are misunderstanding something I do not belong to you I am a shinobi of Kanoha and will continue to be so to protect this village but I do not belong to you neither does the QB you people have gotten the idea that you own bijus because you have forced them to becoming your slaves I cannot teach people old as you what a biju is. It is not only the old but everyone except Jinchurikis who live with bijus know what they are I am different from you so is any Jinchuriki you have never stood face to face with a biju nor spoken to it but because of their power bijus have been treated as nothing but mindless beasts that needed to be controlled you have made them your weapons you have drawn conclusions that they are evil mindless and need to be used by you, you stamp your names in every bijou seek to use the bijou's power for your own goals when they fight to protect themselves you say they are dangerous and need to be contained you then lock them for years robbing them their freedom how do you think they will act once they are freed from their shackles no wonder bijou's loathe humanity while he spoke the QB merely Listen with half-open eyes are you trying to say that a bijou has its own mind are you trying to defend it against what it did to the village many years ago wasn't it your parents who were killed fighting it Naruto merely took an amused expression on his face if there is something funny you can tell us some question with a narrowed look Naruto shook his head I apologize it is just that years ago when the QB attacked the village it just appeared bijous don't do that everybody knows this had it never occurred to anyone that someone might have summoned it here added to that was it not this very village that raised the issue that the QB was being manipulated by the Sharingan it was just the thought Danzo responded but I do have reason to believe that it was indeed being manipulated by a Sharingan however that changes nothing my thoughts Exactly Naruto said surprising Danzo but his next words were unexpected because it is a bijou we were quick to judge if it had been a person like us we would have tried to get all the facts before passing on judgment we are quick to hate and condemn what we don't understand well that is a flaw of human nature Naruto Shikaku said calmly are you saying that before we pass down judgment to the QB we should have spoken to it to find out what really happened perhaps but they would not have gotten an answer from the bijou it would have destroyed them before they could the QB would have never listened to anything especially after it had been sealed for many years inside his mother nothing would have pleased the bijou than destroying this village for what it did naturally he was not going to say it aloud and then we should forget what it do to our families the person was surely not happy you were jumping to your own conclusions I never said anything like that I was merely Pointing a flaw to human nature Naruto rebuffed smoothly with a small shrug of his shoulders you made it sound like bijus have some intelligence them it is known that Jinchurikis can speak to their bijus then you are a good judge to this. Does the QB show some sort of intelligence the mildly curious question was from the head of the Hyuga clan Naruto merely smiled the man was impassive about the whole thing I have had a few conversations with the QB what I can say is that it is not. Stupid far from it age is wisdom isn't that the saying of old people in other words. Because the QB has been alive for generations and has much wisdom and probably knows much about this world than we do Shikaku said rubbing his head this was all troubling this ought to be a subject of another day I have yet to give you my proposal Naruto said changing subject he had gone off track because of what Koharu had said get on with it then Tsum stated in impatience while some people chose to ignore everything else and be happy with what they have I chose to broaden my thinking my generation does not know where we live in this world happily without knowing whose blood was spilled for this peace we have they care about having fun and achieving small dreams but everyone knows that outside the wall of this village lay vultures of all kinds no even inside these walls some exist I have seen what the world is the darkness that so many embrace I have seen what people do for the sake of getting a Mission done I have seen the cruelty of men and I want to change all that when I start my own family I don't want my children to see what I have seen because of this I am fighting for peace I have started an organization called the United Nations it is an organization that seeks to unite the world under one umbrella I hope to gather leaders of villages and have them work together to making this world a better place naive child Danzo spoke I had thought you had grown but it appears I was wrong. 
It was nothing unexpected from Danzo Naruto thought I am far from that Danzo you should know that I have experienced some things that made me think twice about staying inside this village for years I waited thinking that this village would accept me as I was but even today there are still those who glare at me those who see the QB in me nevertheless there are those who have changed this little change is what gives me hope for a better future. If I had not grown I would be seeking revenge. Against those who have treated me unfairly, I would have all the reasons to take revenge and all the words to justify it no doubt the QB would be more than willing to take part in a fool's parade even when I am still here I have little hope that these people will one day start calling me a hero it will only happen if I save them from mass destruction would you call a person who thinks like that a naive child you may be here just to honor your father's death, and your mother's your words also. Make me question your loyalty to this village, but that is of little consequence there is no way that this way will be united that is unless he gained supreme power and controlled every nation that is a matter of your own opinion isn't Danzo-san the fact that you also have the guts to question my loyalty towards this village gives me a better view of your mentality Naruto paused for a moment before he went on just to be clear, the fact that my father died for this village means nothing to me I have decided to stay in this village because I chose to Danzo narrowed his eyes it may be my opinion but that is the truth look at how Sunagakure was willing to turn on us for the sake of power Sunagakure was tricked by your former comrade Orochimaru the fact that Orochimaru killed the Kazakage means that he had refused to betray us doesn't it that said I don't see your point perhaps you are viewing it another angle than I am if so could you enlighten me Naruto knew that there was nothing that Danzo could say about that he was even tempted to throw another punch by saying that if it was Danzo who was leader of Suna, he would have worked with Orochimaru everyone knew the kind of man Danzo was so no one would disagree to it Shikaku spoke before things between Naruto and Danzo could escalate further if you do manage to unite the leaders what makes you think they won't turn on each other we have alliances with other villages and peace treaties but those are nothing villagers can overlook them and betray their allies say for example Kanoha IWA and Kiri are all under the UN when these villages become members there is a code of conduct that they must follow and rules that they must abide and all these villagers are allies and have signed agreements agreements signed by both Kage and Daimyo should IWA chose to attack Kanoha there will be severe consequences and it will be held accountable for all the damages members of the UN all have to accept rules of being members if IWA does. Attack the UN will take action based on the rules of the organization the action by the UN would be to have all members impose a ban on IWA the village will no longer receive missions from anyone the UN will ensure that missions from outside do no reach the village the daimyo of the earth will also be forced to cut off his funding shinobi of IWA will also be barred from stepping into the territory of any member of the UN we will also force the village to pay for construction damages depending. On the damage and reasons for the act of betrayal IWA may be forced to cut its military power members of the UN will enforce of this with other members backing everything IWA will have no choice everyone was left speechless even Danzo those kinds of sanctions were ridiculous if any of those sanctions were imposed on any village it would suffer very badly the image would be in tatters and with the lack of missions as well as funding from the daimyo the village's economy will hit a low the village will become poor and villagers would surely flee to somewhere they can live happily even Danzo had to admit at the fact that there would be other villages involved meant that there was no escaping punishment no one could risk those sanctions in your scenario if Sunagakir which is not a member of the UN attacks Kanoha can the same sanctions be imposed on it choose a question curiously look at this members of the UN fight together if Kanoha is attacked Kiri and IWA are obligated to send Support without question this will mean that Suna will be against three villages would they really provoke a fight knowing they are outnumbered he paused for a moment but if they are foolish to fight a lost cause the UN will take action none of the members of the UN countries in this regard will not allow Suna Shinobi into their borders nor will they send missions you have thought this through Shikaku said giving Naruto a small smile with the kind of sanctions that can be imposed on those who do not respect their alliances no one would dare to attack an ally if so we will be looking at starvation others nodded and the fact that when you seek war with a member of this organization you have the rest of the members to look out for makes things difficult attacking means looking for death you are certainly not considering this or you Hamura question looking surprised that the clan heads seem to be accepting Naruto's words so easily well given everything the blonde had said it was 
difficult to say he was naive my proposal is for Kanoa to become a member of the UN Sunagakure Amagakure Kirgakure the wave country Takigakure are already members as well as other small villages what when did this happen since I returned from my training trip I have been busy I have shown the Hokage UNHQ which were built in Yuzushiogakure I may be a shinobi of Kanoa but to balance everything I ensure that this organization is not based in Kanoa and Kanoa has no authority over it Naruto Explained lightly how can that be you are a shinobi of Kanoa if you are the one who founded this organization it means that it is also under our authority Koharu stated almost smirking by that logic my house is also under your authority Naruto responded so blankly it is creditable that you have managed to get this other villages to join you Danzo said it sounded a bit sarcastic though but Naruto was not sure the man knew sarcasm but how will this benefit Kanoa we do not need other villages to protect us for Kanoa it is not much about benefiting but rather it is about trying to forge a better tomorrow the village has nothing to lose but everything to gain unless you are not looking for a peaceful world and love war and wish for more of our shinobi to die in meaningless battles you can say that Kanoa does not need to be a member of the UN the last words were said with a purpose there was a meaning underneath them Danzo was quick to understand that with such an organization I believe that villagers will have to share some of the things they excel and that will be unacceptable what we excel and makes us hold the edge over the other villages and I refuse to share anything that will make other villages strong you have a problem you have been caught up in war too much that you no longer see an ally you are always thinking about winning and making sure that Kanoa rules such a mentality is what brings conflicts in this world I doubt you even trust anyone in this table then should we listen to the words of a man who cannot trust anyone but himself Danzo responded by narrowing his eyes towards Naruto that was unexpected he did not expect the blonde to give a question like that perhaps he had been right at the beginning the blonde had grown he was proving to be a nuisance than anything well he could use this little party to further his goals it seemed that Tsunade was agreeing with this so were the clan heads with other villages close he could keep an eye on them closely and it would be easy to extend his control with an existing party a few days later the event had yet to start and Naruto had decided to see the daimyo first when he was coming to this capital he had come across Gara and his sister he joined them along the way as they ventured the lands of the wind country towards the capital their journey was not that long perhaps it was because of the company when one was with other people conversing time seemed to flow fast the sand siblings were good people so conversations with them were always fruitful and not so much boring after reaching the capital Naruto had parted ways with the siblings to go find the daimyo the event would start tomorrow morning they would have to get some rest before the event it also appeared that the daimyo had been expecting him since when he asked the guard appeared and led him to the personal residence of the daimyo he had no problems with it though for someone who says she did not know much of the vultures crawling out there you awfully have a lot of guards around this place Naruto said leaning against the door frame of Miyuki's study with the event that is going to be hosted I am obligated to increase internal security if you are a host you would not want any of your guests to get hurt in your watch would you Miyuki stated standing up from behind her desk and walked up towards Naruto no it would not bode well and it certainly won't do any favors if it becomes apparent that the wind daimyo is not capable of protecting her guests in her own backyard Naruto responded watching the woman with careful eyes it certainly would not Miyuki smiled at him I am glad you could make it she said extending her hand towards him Naruto smiled and shook her hand I had to be here especially when the daimyo had requested that I be her escort I doubt anyone would refuse that privilege flattering Miyuki did not stop smiling Please sit down Naruto nodded and took a seat in front of her desk rumors say you have been quite bust over the past weeks my informants tell me you have been spotted in a number of villages ah uh, you are quite informed well that is to be expected from a daimyo despite age and experience and yes I have been quite busy over the past weeks but it is merely talking though not the usual business of shinobi Naruto responded in a calm tone he was okay with staying away from battles as long as he was busy with fruitful work getting more work done was an important matter for him than anything ah that must be a waste to the skills of Namake's Naruto the daimyo stated as if she knew much about Naruto's power but the truth was that she did not know much but she had a feeling that he was skilled if he had made Jonin he had to be skilled nevertheless much about his skills is kept a secret Naruto merely smiled I have no complaints if what I am doing is better than fighting my work is beneficial for better relations with Kanoa's allies while fighting is nothing more than having to sweat and more bloodshed but it is not always that a fight will result in death you don't enjoy testing your skills like other shinobi it was apparent to her that many shinobi liked locking horns in battle they seemed to be thrilled when fighting while well, they were trained professional killers but she liked to believe that they were more than that I have no problems with a friendly spar in fact I do enjoy testing my 
skills with another shinobi but I only fight with enemy when I am forced Naruto explained lightly the nature of every shinobi is not battle programmed some of us do enjoy some peace yes I am seeing that now her smile never escaped her face as she spoke how was your journey it was lively I came here with the Kazakage and his sister Naruto responded calmly Miyuki took a thoughtful expression on her face you are friends with Gara and work with his sister well you have a good relationship with the sand siblings and i can see that relationship is paving way for better relations between suna and kanoha the relations has soothed down before i was even introduced to the picture i believe since gara took charge things changed since he was more than willing to meeting the godame okage halfway and repairing the broken relationship naruto responded flatly it was the efforts of both gara and Tsunade that made things the way they were he would not take credit for something he did not work for Miyuki nodded I know that but what you are doing now is admirable not many leave fighting to venture and talking treaties and alliances with other villages I do not think there's any village that does what you do for Kanoa leaders are more mindful about their own villages and countries to bother with others most will even laugh when the other fail she paused for a moment before continuing perhaps the wind country as a whole will ally itself with Kanoa that would be certainly great Naruto said. Smiling well enough about the serious matter the woman said giving the blonde a wide smile come on let us go and find you a room so you can show me what you will be wearing tomorrow I do not wish for you to show up looking like that she said standing up what I don't want you to ruin things with your choice of attire if you are wearing what I don't like I will have you change to wear something that I will like and will be suitable for the event tomorrow she grabbed the blonde by his right hand. Dragging him out of the office I will have you know that my sense of fashion is tolerable and you will like what I have bought I doubt it but surprise me few days later Kanoha I am impressed Jiraiya said looking straight at Naruto perhaps this was finally the child of prophecy after what Tsunade had told him he could not have been more proud of his godson I know that your father would be proud of what you were doing although he did wish Minato was here to witness this but that was just a lost. Cause the Yandame was not going to come back he was dead I have not done anything yet Naruto stated downplaying everything there is still a long way to go don't sell yourself shot kid no one has gotten three great villages to join the same organization not only that but you also have the other small villages joining you that is not something anyone can achieve I am even tempted to say that I knew all along that you were born for great things Jiraiya stated a bit proudly Jiraiya is right what? You have done is not something anyone can do I never believed him when he spoke about the child of prophecy but I may start believing him now Tsunade said firmly Naruto just gave the Godame a warm smile he really did not know what to say I have already sent a word to my spy network to help spread word of the UNA soon enough you will have many small villages contacting you thank you godfather I was going to ask you to do something of that nature but you have already taken care of it Jiraiya waved his hand nonchalantly anything for peace he shrugged I have a request Hokage sama Naruto said turning his voice serious what is it if it is okay with you I would like to relinquish this he gave her his forehead protector it meant much to him but it was something that he had to sacrifice for the UNA I wish to wear a new forehead protector it is the headband of Yuzu but it will become the official headband of the United Nations Alliance it will become a problem when I walk around carrying Kanoa's headband others will not think that I stand for the UNA's interests but Kanoa's I wish to remove that thought this does not mean that I will no longer serve Kanoha I will always be a loyal person to this village I may have had a troubled childhood because of the villagers but this is my home this is the village my parents died protecting I do not wish to fight for acknowledgement but I fight for peace that makes sense Jiraiya said I don't see much problem with it especially since Kanoha and Yuzu were tight before the latter villages fall will this affect your work in this village not at the moment I will continue to do my work within the village I will always be available should there be anything you need me to do Naruto responded calmly okay Tsunade said surprising both Jiraiya and Naruto but the look on her eyes said otherwise Naruto was just not going to say anything about it or she would let loose of whatever she was bottling Naruto bowed his head slightly thank you Bachan he said before he stood up just to remind you, my trip to the snow country has not been cancelled that said I will leave tomorrow morning I will report at the borders of the fire country before heading out to catch a ship that will be heading towards the snow Tsunade side you never spend much time in the village anymore she said sadly I know but if this is a sacrifice I must make for a better future I will do so Naruto said convincingly Jiraiya come and see me later on today I have some matter I must discuss with you with that Naruto went away he certainly has matured well Jiraiya spoke with a warm smile indeed he is Tsunade agreed the snow is far away he will take some time to get there and I have a feeling that he won't return soon he has been pushing himself lately and he may take some time off there away from everything I would not blame him Jiraiya shrugged before grinning but this works better for us we will have much time to plan for his birthday while he is away I had thought you would have forgotten about it Jiraiya shook his head